presentation is going to focus on particle segregation. The preferred state for particles of different size and density is to remain segregated. Particles to be mixed have different properties and tend to exhibit segregation. Particles with the same physical property then collect together in one part of the mixture and the random mixture is not a natural state for such a system of particles. Even if particles are originally mixed by some means, they will tend to unmix on hand when such is move and important. Although differences in size, density, and shape of the constitute particles of a mixture may give rise to segregation, difference in particle size is by far the most important of these. Density difference is comparatively unimportant, except in fluidization, where density difference is more important than size difference. So in summary, the main factors that promote segregation are particle size, differences in particle shape, and differences in particle density. And as I mentioned earlier, size is the most important, and this is what we're going to be focusing on during this presentation. Separation of particles is critical in some industries, such as the pharmaceutical industry. Separation of active ingredients from the rest of the ingredients, such as sugar and cellulose, cause major problems with quality control. Large quantities of fine active ingredients, or conversely, the lack of active ingredient, will prevent a drug from coming to market. It's also important in batteries. Batteries are filled volumetrically. If there are density variations due to segregation, the battery will not last as long as required. Mechanisms of segregation according to size. They are trajectory segregation, percolation of fine particles, rise of coarse particles on vibration, and eulerization of segregation. Trajectory segregation occurs when particles are caused to move through the air and are projected horizontally. A particle of diameter 2x would therefore travel four times as far before coming to rest. And that's as you can see here. The smaller particles tend to fall shorter, and the larger particles, the ones with the larger diameter, tend to move further. During mixing, particles are set in motion and kinetic energy is imparted to them. Larger particles have larger energies and tend to move a greater distance into the powder mass before they are brought to rest. This may result in preferential separation and incur horizontal as well as vertical planes. Another mechanism of segregation is percolation of fine particles, and this occurs when the mass of the particles is distributed in such a way that individual particles move. A rearrangement in the packing of the particles occurs. The gaps are created allow particles from above to fall and particles in some other place to move upward. If the powder is composed of particles of different size, it will be easier for small particles to fall down, and so there will be a tendency for small particles to move downwards, leading to segregation. Even a small difference in particle size can give rise, rise to significant segregation. And you can see that here, all these small little particles are able to fall through these big particles and therefore collect in the bottom. So now you have two, the two different sizes being segregated, as you can see here, and that shows that you're not attaining your mixing. In ulturation segregation, when a powder containing an appreciable proportion of particles under 50 micrometers is charged into a storage vessel or hopper, air is displaced upwards. The upward velocity of this air may exceed the terminal freefall velocity of some of the finer particles, which may then remain in suspension after the larger particles have settled to the surface of the hopper contents. For particles in this size range in the air, the terminal freefall velocity will be typically of the order of a few centimeters per second and will increase as the square of the particle diameter. Thus, a pocket of fine particles is generated in the hopper each time solids are charged. So as you can see here, as the gas flows up, all these small particles are moving upward because of their density, while these big ones are able to fall downward, creating the two separate size particles that are no longer mixed. Rolling is another type of collision. During, pour, during pouring, a powder pile is formed and gradually built up. During this pile, 
formation, the larger particles, because of their mass, have a tendency to roll down outside the powder part. On the other hand, the fine particles have a tendency to stick to the top and concentrate in the middle of the pile. So as you can see here, as this is being poured into the drum, you have your smaller particles concentrating here because they're sticking to one another. But then you have your bigger particles rolling down and collecting at the sides, as you can see here in your drum. This figure shows saturation in, in a heap formed by pouring a mixture of two different size particles. So as you can see again, you have your smaller particles forming towards the top, as you can see here, and your bigger particles rolling down towards the bottom. So this figure is going to show the rise of coarse particles on vibration, which is another mechanism for segregation. Rise of coarse particles on vibration of fine particles can occur when the mixture is distributed causing rearrangement of the particles. This can happen during stirring, shaking, vibration, or when pouring particles into a heap. The rise of coarse particles on the vibration occurs if a mixture of the particles of different sizes is vibrated. The larger particles move upward. This is demonstrated by placing a single large bowl at the bottom of a bed of sand. I'm going to show you as this thing shakes, you're going to have different images, and the steel ball is going to rise to the surface. So pay attention. You have your different layers of particles here, and you have your steel ball down here. As I move the pictures, you're going to see the steel ball move upward due to the shaking of the beaker. So as you can see, as you saw, this ball was down here and it was able to rise all the way to the top here due to the shaking of the beaker because of the particle sizes. because of the size difference, as I've mentioned before. The difficulty of mixing two components can therefore be reduced by making the size of the components as similar as possible and by reducing the absolute size of both components. Segregation is generally not a serious problem when all of the particles are less than 30 micrometers. In such fine powders, the interparticle forces generated by electrostatic charging, van der Waals forces, and forces due to moisture are large compared with the gravitational and inertial forces on the particles. This causes the particles to stick together, preventing segregation as the particles are not free to move relative to one another. These powders are referred to as cohesive powders. Ordered or interactive mixtures produce mixtures of better quality by being made up of small particles adhered to the surface of a carrier particle in a controlled manner. By careful selection of particle size and engineering of interparticle forces, High quality mixtures with very small variants can be achieved. This technique is used in the pharmaceutical industry where quality control standards are exacted. So as you can see here, you have your small particles right here on the surface of this carrier particle. This is your carrier particle, which is often a liquid. And you have to choose a liquid that will not well, that will allow the particles to stick to it. So if it's not possible to, offer, to alter the size to be less than 30 micrometers or to add a liquid such as that could be a carrier particle, then in order to avoid segregation, care should be taken to avoid situations which are more likely to promote segregation. In particular, pouring operations and the formation of moving slope and powder surfaces should be avoided. Segregation of the fine particles can occur whenever a free-flowing powder composed of a range of particle sizes is disturbed, causing rearrangement of particles. This can happen during stirring, shaking, vibration, or when pouring into a heap. Some examples that we went over today were pouring powders into a heap, such as this first image here. When a free-flowing particle mixture is poured into a heap, segregation occurs if there is a size distribution. The fine particles in the mixture here are colored in white, while the bigger particles are this darker black brown color. We've also gone over vibration, in which vibration of a free flowing particle mixture results in size segregation. An extreme example of this is when a large steel ball can be made to rise to the top of a beaker of sand simply by shaking the beaker up and down.
This is shown in the demonstration I showed earlier in which the steel ball starts at the bottom and through shaken, it ends up at the top of the beaker. Another thing that can cause segregation is rolling. The shear and cause when a particle mixture is rotated and jumped can also give rise to segregation. So as you can see here, you have, as you roll this drum this way, you have your yellow particles, which are segregating towards the center, and the red particles, which are segregating to more like the outside here. So as you segregate, the different particles end up in different locations as it's being rolled.